In the last couple of videos, we've been looking at what linguistics is and what linguistics does. Basically, we try to find patterns in language data so that then we can describe how language works. This is what we do. What we do not do is tell people how they should be speaking. We are not the language police. Let's uh, take care of some other misconceptions first. Linguistics is not about speaking many languages. Many of us love languages and maybe learn a few of them, but it, it is not about speaking the language. It is, it is about trying to understand the patterns in human languages. For example, in the previous videos, we had exercises about Swahili mor uh, morphology and about modern Greek morphology. And we didn't necessarily speak those languages, but we managed to observe patterns in the data. So in linguistics, we study structure to describe it. We don't necessarily have to learn how to speak them. You could, for example, just study English and then dedicate yourself to English. Linguistics is not about being a translator or an interpreter. Translators take a language and transform it into a different one, usually in the written form. And interpreters do this in spoken form and usually in real time, like in the UN and so forth. Linguistics is not about interpreting. It's about understanding the structure of language. And most importantly, we are not the language police. We do not prescribe. We don't tell people that this is right or wrong. We describe what people are doing with language. Imagine if you did that with any other natural phenomenon. If you looked at grass and then told grass, you're growing wrong. Or if you studied fish, only to tell a few of those fish, you're swimming wrong. You should be swimming some other way. That is not what linguistics does. We try to describe the patterns we find in human language. And I want you to think about this for a moment. Has anyone ever criticized you for the way you speak, for the way you, you talk? Or surely you must know someone in your family who does this, who criticizes people because of the way they talk, because of the way they write. Try to think about that for a second, because all of us know somebody like that. And it is strange that, that those criticisms are so frequent, because if you think about it, people know so much when they're speaking a language, for example, English. When you're speaking English, you know that some words are valid and some are not, like plork versus proc. You know that there are some sentences that are valid while others are not. You know that you can say the cat ate, but not cat the ate, or cat the quickly slept, for example. So imagine having all of this knowledge about how to put English together. You really know a lot. And you can even generate sentences that no one has ever uttered before in completely new English sentences, and people will understand you. So whoever you are, you know tons about English. And yet people choose to nitpick on the tiniest and silliest things, on embarrassing mistakes, like double negatives, for example. I didn't do nothing. And people say that, oh, this is a terrible thing. You look like you look so dumb when you do it. This is, first of all, it's stupid. Second, it's false that English doesn't use double negatives. Uh, English is full of double negatives, and it has always been so. From the very beginning, in Chaucer's He never yet no villainy in a sede, he never said no villainy. Shakespeare had double negatives. I never was, nor never will be. Milton had double negatives, nor did they not perceive the evil, evil plight in which they were. Um, modern contemporary English has double negatives, like I don't care, can't tell me nothing. And people always say, oh, this is a logic rule. If you have two negatives, they cancel each other out, which is absolutely ridiculous because many languages do have double negatives and they don't cancel each other out. In Spanish, we have to use a double negative. Yo no vi nada. In French, je n'ai rien vu. In Portuguese, eu não vi nada. Ya ni chivo ni video. Nani mumina kata. All of those languages have the same phrase. I didn't see nothing. And of course, the double negative doesn't cancel out. It just, it's a reinforcement of the negative. 
Likewise, when English structures have double negatives, they don't cancel each other out. They reinforce each other. And this is something that has always existed in the English language. People are obsessed with the tiniest nitpicky, pickiest things like that, like um, having the apostrophes and there, 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 which is weird because all these, all of them sound the same. Why would anyone care about a parenthesis being an apostrophe being there or not? For something like it's versus it's, as in it's great to be a kitten. Like, who, who has the time to care about whether an apostrophe is there or not, particularly one that makes no sound? It sounds the same with or without it. It's usually people who would say things like this, like if your grammar is terrible, I'm going to find you and kill you, or that good grammar is like hygiene, like personal hygiene. Uh, and that if you use wrong grammar, you're somehow dirty or you have bad morals. This general impulse to try to correct people over nitpicky rules is called prescriptivism. It's the impulse to regulate language and usually to control them in ways that are conservative and elitist. It's an attempt to, to um, control or regulate language for the purpose of enforcing some norm. Whenever uh, you find them, you always find them telling you that you should follow this rule and that rule or this that, so that you don't make an embarrassing mistake. Whenever that happens, you shouldn't be asking yourself if you should follow that rule or not. What you should be asking yourself is who is giving you that piece of advice? What norms are they telling you to follow and why are they asking you to do this? Why are they being nitpicky about a tiny detail when there's so much of English that you already know and can use to communicate perfectly well? Prescriptivism is about power. It's about deciding who has the best form of language. And these rules usually come from speakers who have more power in a society people who are writers, people who belong to elites, and in general, people who have enough spare time and enough spare resources to learn tiny details about spelling, such as the difference between there, there, and there, all of which sound the same. They sound the same. You can only learn that they're spelled differently if you have spare time and spare resources to read and read and practice and practice all these things again and again. The bad thing about these rules is that whoever doesn't follow them is discriminated against. People are judged to be uneducated, rude, even as we saw to like things like hygiene if they don't follow rules like the apostrophes, which again, they sound the same way. The only way you memorize which one goes where is because you have the time to do so to learn this arcane rule. These prescriptive rules are different from the kind of rules that we studied in the previous videos. A linguistic or descriptive rule tells you the structure of a language. For example, a descriptive rule for English would be that the word the appears before a noun, the cat eats, and that you cannot have structures like cat the eats. This would be a wrong English sentence because other people would not understand it. Con contrast this to a prescriptive rule, which is not about having a sentence that can be understood or not. It's usually a rule that it's somewhat arbitrary and that is proposed by an elite who believes their language is better, such as English doesn't use double negatives. The truth is, if you use a sentence with double negatives, everyone will understand it. It will not affect the way you are understood, and uh, it's not the same as a descriptive rule. In summary, what we're going to be doing in the class is describing language and trying to figure out descriptive rules to make models of how language works. But we're also going to be paying a clo uh, close attention to prescriptivism, which are rules like the apostrophes for the there or the double negatives that are really aesthetic rules. They don't affect whether you're understood or not, but they do affect um, how other people perceive others. And they're usually based on styles of groups of people who have more economic or social power. That is prescriptivism, and that is not what we do. 
we describe language. 